118. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good, because his faithful love lasts forever. Let Israel say it, God's faithful love lasts forever. The Lord was my strength and protection. He was my saving help. The sounds of joyful songs and deliverance are heard in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's strong hand is victorious. The Lord's strong hand is ready to strike. The Lord's strong hand is victorious. I won't die. No, I will live and declare what the Lord has done. Yes, the Lord definitely disciplined me, but he didn't hand me over to death. Open the gates of righteousness for me so I can come in and give thanks to the Lord. This is the Lord's gate. Those who are righteous enter through it. I thank you because you answered me, because you were my saving help. The stone rejected by the builders is now the main foundation stone. This has happened because of the Lord. It is astounding in our sight. This is the day the Lord acted. We will rejoice and celebrate it. And from Acts 10, Peter said, I really am learning that God doesn't show partiality to one group of people over another. Rather, in every nation, whoever worships him and does what is right is acceptable to him. This is the message of peace he sent to the Israelites by proclaiming the good news through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. You know what happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism John preached. You know about Jesus of Nazareth, whom God anointed with the Holy Spirit and endowed with power. Jesus traveled around doing good and healing everyone oppressed by the devil because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. 
They killed him by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him up on the third day and allowed him to be seen, not by everyone, but by us. We are witnesses whom God chose beforehand. We ate and drank with him after God raised him from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. And from Matthew 28. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look at the tomb. Look, there was a great earthquake, for an angel from the Lord came down from heaven, coming to roll the stone. He rolled it away and sat on it. Now his face was like lightning and his clothes as white as snow. The guards were so terrified of him that they shook with fear and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, don't be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here because he's been raised from the dead, just as he said. Come, see the place where they laid him. Now, hurry and go tell his disciples. He's been raised from the dead. He's going on ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. I've given the message to you. With great fear and excitement, they hurried away from the tomb and ran to tell his disciples. But Jesus met them and greeted them. They came and grabbed his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Don't be afraid. Go and tell my brothers that I am going into Galilee. They will see me there. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The evidence. There's a subtitle to this sermon this morning, and it's the risen Christ is on the move. And is often my custom on high holy days like Easter and Christmas, I like to tell a story. Stories reach us in different ways and sometimes connecting us with a memory or a feeling we haven't felt maybe for a while. Then my hope is that we find something new from these shared stories, something that makes us better neighbors. And this story comes from Laurel Mathewson, who graciously said she would be honored for me to bring it to you. And I invite you, as I said earlier, I invite you to follow us on Facebook as we will be continuing the conversation with the sermon this week. So we begin with this question. What kind of faith gets you through 25 years in a refugee camp. The choir director at the church where I serve, says Laurel, has unusual credentials. She used to lead a large choir in the Niaragusa refugee camp in Tanzania. She grew up there herself. Her extended family fled from violence in the Democratic Republic of the Congo and then spent almost 25 years in Tanzania before resettlement in San Diego in 2016. She says, I met Maitreda that fall when she arrived at St. Luke's with her two young children and her voice that moves worshipers to tears whether or not they understand Swahili or Kibembe. Maitreda also leads a band, which recently held a Congolese gospel concert at the church on a Sunday night. The diverse audience cheered as the dancers moved in unison, 
And Laurel says, my own voice rose unbridled when her nine-year-old son temporarily took center stage. It was a victory cry. Let's just say he hasn't received a lot of positive attention at school since his US arrival. The next day, a white congregant in his 70s said he couldn't stop wondering about the concert. He said, what kind of faith gets you through 25 years in a refugee camp singing God's praises? What kind of faith has you dancing and writing new songs about Jesus as you pick flowers and paint ships to try to make rent in your new homeland? What kind of faith is this? Now, nearly 2,000 years down the line, we still struggle to absorb the breadth of God's Eastertide movement. Despite Peter's astonished declaration in Acts 10, which we read today, Peter said, I, am, I really am learning that God doesn't show partiality to one group of people over another. Rather, in every nation, whoever worships him and does what is right is acceptable to him. So we still seem to need our own Acts 10 moment in these times. We need to be surprised again by God's present, by God's presence in unexpected places. Peter's wonder that Gentiles could be accepted by God and Christ without adopting Jewish practices is worth trying to translate. This is the pivotal awakening to a church that is for every nation. The repercussions of the Acts 10 moment and the insistent advocacy of Paul give birth to Christianity as a faith where you do not have to become someone you are not. That was one of the biggest surprises I learned, either ethnically, culturally, or linguistically, to be at peace with the God known first by the people of Israel. Because churches where we all look and sound the same remain the norm. And this can be as shocking for us today as it was in the first century. So we ask, do we truly understand that God shows no partiality, that everyone who trusts in Jesus receives the peace of forgiveness and can join in the victory song of God's Easter people? I shall not die, says the psalmist, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. Each song Maitre Does Band offered could be heard as a variation on the themes of Psalm 118, with a special affection for Jesus as the name of the one who has opened the gates of righteousness. They varied from the day-to-day -day theology of our Savior gives us joy on earth to the sweetly imaginative image of dancing with Jesus in heaven expressed by Jesus and me. Do we simply need to be reminded that the resurrection bears good news to us, to us, whoever we are, but it never belongs only to us? To celebrate Easter is to celebrate a new epoch of history and relationship to God, not just an event that gives hope for a new day in our lives, though it can do that too. If our vision is getting nearsighted, we need to listen again as the angel in Matthew's gospel account foreshadows this expansive dynamism of the Easter faith. Go quickly and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. We must try to catch up and witness what God is doing in Christ, 
alive and at large in the world. That's a phrase from poet John Maysfield. God's ongoing work in Christ is never comatose or captive, neither to local geographies nor to the hidden fences, the hidden fences of human expectations. I tend to want the kingdom of God to be developed, she says, in a tidy, clear line. If I can't detect change, I begin to doubt the architectural plans and progress of the one who laid the chief cornerstone. I'm always looking for God outside Jerusalem or wherever I saw him last. Why isn't the risen one showing up for the hinted at work that I assigned? To hear again, through Peter's own surprise, that the spirit of Jesus is at large, is to know and trust that he is always active and that we too must remain on the move. As we try stumbling to go where the angels or visions or dreams or Christ himself tells us, we may indeed encounter him often unexpectedly. This is the smile-worthy back and forth of this gospel story. He is going ahead of you, says the angel, so Mary and Mary run to tell the disciples. But then, surprise, Jesus meets them on the way with a sunny greeting. Hello. They fall down to worship him, and Jesus offers words of comfort and courage. Do not be afraid. But then, come now, let's keep moving. Go and tell my brothers to go. So it's me speaking now, Pastor Brenda. When I was meeting in a group with some other pastors, we were looking at the Easter story from the Gospel of Mark this Thursday. Now in that Easter story, the two Marys are making their way to the tomb on Saturday morning. And as they are walking, they say to one another, actually it would be Sunday morning, as they are walking, they say to one another, who will roll away the stone for us? And as we know, Jesus' tomb is sealed with a large stone. So my friend, Mike Pascal from Sundance, pastor at Sundance, says, those women are going to see Jesus and they don't even know how they are going to get into his tomb but they go anyway. Those women are on the move. And then he refers to this part of the story. After Jesus rose up early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene. She went and reported to the ones who had been with him who were mourning and weeping. But even after they heard the news, they didn't believe that Jesus was alive and that Mary had seen him. So Pastor Mike wonders aloud, and I'm paraphrasing here, we know those men were huddled scared in the upper room and Mary was out visiting Jesus' grave. The men didn't believe that Jesus had appeared to Mary. Did Mary get to see Jesus first? because she was on the move, because she wasn't huddled scared with the men? He wondered if just moving, even if we're not certain how we're going to accomplish something, rolling away a large tombstone, by the very act of being faithful, the Holy Spirit shows up to help us along. But he wonders, and he thinks, we have to be making some kind of effort. And I wonder, isn't that the answer to our opening question? What kind of faith gets you through 25 years in a refugee camp? I wonder if it isn't the kind of faith that keeps people moving and singing and dancing in a refugee camp. The kind of faith that keeps us going in a global pandemic. I played the hymn, Come Spirit Come, over and over again last week. 
Do what you need to sustain that faith, your faith. Sing, call each other, dance, pray. And Laurel has the last word here, and she reminds us, Jesus is on the move, and the Easter era of getting closer to God is unfolding in ways we cannot understand, but might occasionally be privileged to witness, like Mary Magdalene did. And keep the conversation going by following us on Facebook. Amen. And now we have our pastoral prayer. Let's be in an attitude of prayer. Each morning we are putting on those comfortable garments of burdens and worries. But now they are dressed, now that we are dressed in joy and wonder, which we will wear every day. Each day we walk through life alone, apart, afraid, our good and faithful friend, death, at our side, constantly whispering in our ears. But now death has lost its power. Now a new friend walks with us. Each evening we empty our worries out of our pockets, leaving them on top of the dresser. But now the dresser has been wiped down. Everything has been sanitized with joy. We could continue to live in the same old ways, the same old days, but now resurrection life is ours. We can sing, dance, and rejoice with you, God in community, holy in one. And now I offer our prayer of dedication. Though alone, separated from others, we can still offer our gifts on this joyous morning, praying that they may bring the light to those in the shadows, laughter to all who mourn, and hope to those longing for life anew. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now let us pray together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. You can unmute yourselves on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now we will move to our final hymn, Crown Him with Many Crowns. With many crowns, the Lamb upon his throne. Hark how the heavenly and the drums abuse about his own. Awake, my soul, and sing of him who died for. Oh, 
your sending. Scattered from one another, we can still go with God into the world. We will offer healing and hope to all who wander in the shadows of life. Separated from one another, we can still go with Jesus to serve others. We will listen to the ignored. We will speak out for the forgotten Alone, stuck wherever we live, we can still join the Spirit in offering steadfast love. We will hold on to the fallen. We will rebuild shattered communities. And now go drenched in the grace and peace of Christ. Amen. And we have a postlude for you, and this is the United Methodist Church Virtual Choir. Oh, my God. 